Okay, so perhaps you're taking thyroid medication like Synthroid or Levothyroxine and you're not feeling a whole lot better. TSH won't stabilize. One month it's too high, the next month it's too low, the next month it's normal. And no matter where your TSH levels fall, uh, you still don't feel very good. And that's because your TSH goes up and down based on your thyroid hormone levels. When you take Synthroid or Levothyroxine, you're taking a synthetic form of T4 known as thyroxine. If you take Cytomel or Lyothyronine, you're taking a synthetic T3 hormone. Taking T3 is no different than taking T4. You still haven't fixed the actual problem in terms of why those levels are low. And so really at best, you're just putting a Band-Aid on a cut. And we all know that Band-Aids don't heal cuts. What needs to happen is that you're, you need to find out or your body needs to become a better converter. You need to convert T4 into T3. Because when T3 levels are low, uh, you don't feel good, right? You start to gain weight, you start to lose hair, you're bloated all the time, you're constipated, you suffer with terrible brain fog, your hair and nails are brittle and crack, and the list just goes on and on. And that's again because you have low T3 levels. Now, one of the most important things you can do if you have thyroid disease is to get your T3 and free T3 levels tested. Because if these are low, I would bet it's the reason you continue to struggle with persistent hypothyroid symptoms, like all the ones that I just mentioned, fatigue and anxiety and miscarriages and all kinds of gut issues. I find it mind-blowing that in today's day and age, your doctors and endocrinologists have no interest in checking your T3 and free T3 levels. Synthroid was first prescribed back in the 1950s. And rather than get up to speed and try to understand T4 to T3 conversion, all the things that slow this down, Doctors and endocrinologists continue to, to really practice an outdated replacement approach. And it's one of the reasons why many of their patients feel no better when they take thyroid medication. I'm Dr. Hagmar, and if I piqued your interest, stay tuned because in this video series, I'm going through many of the different reasons why people can't convert T4 into T3 and ultimately end up with low T3 levels. In today's video, I wanna talk about a topic so many thyroid patients are dealing with, and that's stress. Stress, fasting, and carbohydrate restriction, right? The effects of chronic stress on thyroid health is well-documented and well-recognized. And we know that prolonged ongoing stress really affects almost every aspect of uh, thyroid hormone pathway. Not only can chronic stress suppress the pituitary gland resulting in uh, altered TSH levels, but stress can also impair the way you know, T4 is produced. It can also impair the way T4 to T3 is converted. And lastly, stress can increase the circulating levels of reverse T3. Now our adrenal glands produce a hormone called cortisol. And during times of stress, if we have too much cortisol being produced for too long of a period of time, that cortisol begins breaking down the body. This is referred to as a catabolic state and the effects of stress. Catabolic means breakdown, where anabolism means to repair and regenerate. Now, high levels of cortisol can lead to tissue breakdown. Naturally, one of the ways the body puts the brakes on this destructive forces of catabolism is by shifting your T3 levels into the production of reverse T3. It's actually pretty smart from a biological standpoint. So if you've ever had your T3 levels checked, this is one of the reasons your reverse T3 levels are elevated. Your body's breaking down faster than it's repairing, and it's your body's way of conserving energy. Now, there are a number of scenarios that can cause an elevated reverse T3. One problem I often encounter with new patients who've been struggling with weight gain is a scenario where patients have undergone prolonged fasting or high fat, uh, low carbohydrate diets like a ketogenic diet or carnivore diet. In some patients, fasting and very low carb diets are perceived as a form of stress by the body. Another scenario where we may see elevated reverse T3 levels are in athletes, very intense prolonged bouts of exercise as in the case of bodybuilding or women getting ready for a show, a marathon training, also disrupt thyroid function. Remember, intense exercise, intense dieting, fasting, starvation, these are all interpreted by the body as a form of stress. If looking at a patient's blood work, we would expect to see low T3, low free T3 levels, and an elevated reverse T3. And this could be happening to you. This could be one of the reasons why you're not feeling good or, or having problems with conversion. So I hope you liked today's video. Uh, if you did, drop me a comment in the section below. Uh, any questions you have, I'll do my best to answer those for you. If you're interested in working with my clinic, you can reach out to, my, uh, reach out to me by visiting my website. And again, as always, if you haven't downloaded my free thyroid guide, you can do that again by visiting my website and clicking on the free guide section. And lastly, if you like today's video, after you give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel, I recommend you watch this video right here.